nothing to do with anything except rock yoga. Each stone has its own geometric shape. So as you're rolling, it forces your body into a movement, which is the yoga of that, the teaching of that stone. So they'd be all ornamental, small rocks, but all piled ornately high and like real fancy art, like placement art. So they just, it was easy pickings. They'd just come up and bust them all. So I started using bigger and bigger rocks to give them more exercise. Uh, and then after they caught up to those, then I started using the even bigger rocks. And then I put in rock spikes and make them like really solid. Until finally, I guess they got too big for them. Then the bulldozers started coming up here and taking them out. I don't know anything about gardening really, so I'm excited just to learn how to grow things. I think what I want to learn is the community aspect of it, like how to do something productively and positively with a group of people. You having fun in the dirt? Yeah. Sit. Sit. And we think it's important for people to know how to grow, grow their own food and uh, to have the opportunity. Do you want to pull it, Peyton? Look at that big one. Do you want to pull it out? Yeah. You got to pull it. It's pretty big. You can't buy that. So that's the thing that's different about freshly picked produce. Part of the reason it's important to have kids out here connecting with the land and growing food is a spiritual connection to their roots, connection to the earth, which is really us, which is what we are. We are earth too. The whole thing about food and doing anything for yourself, I sort of feel as some form of quiet activism. It's not activism in the sense that like I'm calling a lot of attention to something, but I feel like it's activism in the sense that it gives myself power and power to people I know rather than to companies or corporations or maybe systems that I don't fully understand the whole process of, you know? I can see the whole process with growing my own food, you know? I see the whole thing. I know how it's all happening and that's important. They'll be wearing suits like these. Uh, to wake up? Uh, wake up? <laughs> yeah. Science says it all. We need change now. And Canada, let's get our heads in gear and let's get rid of these tar sets. When I was pregnant, I thought that I didn't have expectations but it turned out I did. I, I really did think that I would have a kid that would talk. If I could have made anything different happen, I would not have my son living two hours away. His anxiety can just go zero to 60 in seconds. So you see a brain that's just like that, and then you see his ability to process the information and his ability to make choices and to maintain emotional control. All that stuff, is, it's heartbreaking sometimes. I was on a lot of pain-killing drugs and really just not able to function very well, and I just thought, I guess I can't do this. And I think it just became really clear to me that I physically could not carry on with that life. Sometimes Solly's like a Zen teacher in how desire brings suffering. <laughs> He's 
such a creature of desire, like he really knows what he wants and he wants it. And when he can't have it or you can't give it to him, there's suffering happens. You know, I see our, our humanness in Saul magnified in a huge way. They don't know how to make you feel guilty. They don't know what resent is or contempt or anything like that. It's definitely taught me that not everyone has ulterior motives. The world isn't such a bad place as far as human nature is concerned.